Hi. Hi, Janet. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Me too. I'm so excited to do this together. Me too. I haven't finished your book, but I got through most of it and I love, 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 love it. I wish I would have found it earlier. Oh, trust me. The reason I wrote the book was because it was the book I needed a decade ago when I was deep in burnout and had no resources to understand what the F was happening to me. All right. Well, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Janet. And the reason why um, we're doing this event and it's because in September, I had a I experienced burnout to the point where I collapsed. It was that bad. And in while searching for answers, I found that all the avenues that I went to were kind of just treating the symptoms and not getting to the root cause. And then I went through a whole self discovery and just this whole mission of researching and getting as much therapy as I possibly can, but more so in searching for answers. Eventually it led me to the right therapist. Um, but I felt that I had learned so much in the process and being someone who's in the wellness industry, I felt that it was all stuff that should be more accessible to people. And a lot of the things of what I thought in my mind burnout was or how it would feel like or, or all the red flags that I would see before getting to the point where I collapsed, it, it was nothing like that. I actually didn't feel any signs. And before this happened, I thought I was someone who was very much in touch with my body um, and only to realize that I wasn't at all because I had my nervous system had to be reset because I had all this unresolved trauma that I wasn't even aware of. Um, and it's just everything that I thought I knew, this totally just flipped it upside down. And so all of those answers I found you have on your book. And then when Aaron connected us, I was like, I read all about you. And I was like, I'm so excited just to learn from you and to hopefully create awareness and, and give people the tools that they need to not get there or if they're already there to kind of heal um in a better way so kelsey hi hi love so in in reading your book um you talk about what led you to start healing so you went through your own thing mm -hmm. i did and you know i know I know so many of the names on here and some of you are, are new. So hello and uh, thank you so much for joining both Janet, myself, um, on behalf of Michelob. You know, I think burnout looks different for every person. We all have a tolerance level that is not always something that's good for us. <laughs> and I had a tolerance level for pain, for anxiety, for overwhelm that I didn't realize was to my detriment. I thought I was probably very similar to you, Janet, and probably very similar to many of you on today. I thought I was like a go-getter. I thought I was a bit, I know I was a bit type A, but I thought I was so full of, um, the ability and the dedication, and I was a Midwesterner, so I prided myself on being a hard worker. And so, you know, burnout came to me in a way very similar to you, that like, I didn't know I was crashing uh, or burning at all until I decided to actually look at it. And I mean, I was in and out of doctor's offices every single month getting a antibiotic, having a urinary tract infection, having, I didn't realize that I was even anxious. Like I didn't, I thought it was normal <laughs> the way that I would feel yeah. when I would be sitting and talking to someone. And I think that's the thing about burnout is that our mind can play these tricks on us and have us believe that we are like 
getting shit done and that we're super accomplished folk oriented and success driven um, and that we're the best, the good friend that always remembers birthdays and sends the gifts and does the thing for family. And then all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're like, I, the idea of going to the post office right now is so overwhelming to me <laughs> that I, like, I can't, I, I don't have the energy to go. And so those are some of the things that like you, I'm now obsessed with talking about and coaching people on and having conversations like this because it looks different for all of us, but I have tips that hopefully help anyone regardless of where they kind of find themselves on the spectrum of burnout. Well, for me, um, everything kind of just exploded because of COVID and I'm a mom of two. So it was, it was, everything at once um and i i own a fitness business so of course we got gravely affected by it so it's just everything and then instead of kind of taking a step back to put into perspective what my limits were i just pushed i just went right to it because there's i felt like there was no other choice than to make it work but in doing that um, I definitely discovered, um, the consequences of violating my limits. And it wasn't until I was literally just answering a text message and I just blacked out and fell to the floor. I don't remember anything after that. I woke up in my bed and I was paralyzed. It, but I wasn't afraid, but I couldn't also like cry for help. I was just paralyzed. And then when I woke up after that hours later, I went to brush my teeth and I forgot how to brush my teeth. I was like in a catatonic state. And I later found out that it was my vagus nerve, like that I just, that we have a fail safe when the body perceives that this is the ultimate doom. There's no escape from this danger. You're gonna get eaten by the lion and it, makes you go numb and takes the fear away. And then it's almost like the most amazing thing that your body does that for you. So you don't feel pain or fear when you die. But the fact that my body sensed that I was in that grave danger yeah. and it, it did what it had to do to help me survive without me consciously even being aware that my body felt this way was really scary for me and a huge eye opener because I'm like, oh my God, like I could have just gone into cardiac arrest and not, not even have seen it coming. Yep. And it's so crazy because of the culture of it's like hustle, 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 team no sleep. I mean, it's just so, it's so dangerous, I feel, and irresponsible. I and agree. I, the words, I, ask all of the people around me and you and I are in a very similar field. People would be surprised how many wellness people are not well. And I don't care that I'm the one saying it, but I'm going to say it that there are so many people in the wellness industry that are not living. Um, and they kind of put out the facade of what they want you to see. And they, if, if you're, if you talk to them, they are truly not balanced and not well because they are tapping out their central nervous system. They do not have an ability to float between the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system in appropriate settings. And, you know, what you just said is so important and relevant because you know, I think of those words, hustle and grind, and I want everyone, especially in 2021, to replace it with the vocabulary of rest and repair. Yeah. Because we need to rest from what we have all just experienced, which is very traumatic. Um, and we don't even know yet how we're going to process this in the future as a post-traumatic stress experience of 2020 in a pandemic, let alone all of the things that we've gone through in America politically, regardless of what spectrum you're on politically, 
there's just been so much that has shifted and transformed. And I think the other part of that that is so critically important is for people to give themselves the radical permission to see that you are not a robot or a machine. You are a human being, not a human doing. And you have to rest and repair after you go through very big life experiences, regardless of what you personally have experienced, Janet, that alone needed deep rest and repair. Giving birth to a child, you need time for rest and repair, let alone then like a business and the fear of the business closing and all of that. And I think, you know, we have not given ourselves the space to have the balance of the scales. Everyone has gone into hustle and grind and do and do more and do more of more. And they have not talked about the other side of that scale, which creates a balanced life. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I found when um, searching for a therapist, it took about four different ones for me to finally land in the one that actually helped with my healing and that's because the first three um the first one told me that i was clinically depressed and she's the one that mentioned that um that i have severe burnout syndrome and recommended medication i know enough and nothing against it at all i i just felt that with the knowledge that i had um about knowing that trauma lives in the body and that everything I, I knew that it was a symptom and i didn't want to just mask the symptom without getting to the root cause at that point i felt this crazy need for answers and i wasn't satisfied with what she was telling me the same thing happened with the second and the third and what's crazy to me is one the cost of getting therapy is really expensive it's not cheap it is not cheap, it's not cheap so the fact that i had the resources to go on this journey is is something that most people don't have so i really want to take what i've learned to share it with as many people as possible but the first three said that it was clinical depression um that is part of burnout um but they all went to medication and then it wasn't until i met the fourth person that they were like you need to try somatic experiencing because this is has yeah. to, yes. You have to go with somatic experiences. This is something that's with your body. You need to reset your nervous system because you have unresolved trauma yep. um, that something with the body can help. And I was like, aha, thank you. Mm. And that, yeah. And it wasn't until I started doing the somatic experiencing that that is what I feel completely, completely changed everything for me. Um, and now I continue to see a therapist, but I feel like I had to reset my nervous system. I had to take care of my body first before I started dealing with the mind. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm so grateful that you share that because, I mean, it gives my whole body went into chills when you said it, because what happens for so many people, Janet, and to everyone listening, and I know some of my Reiki students and people who've studied with me are on as well, is what we don't teach in school and if you don't learn it in the home you don't learn it at all which is how to feel in your physical body the experiences that you are having and adapting to and adjusting to in your life and it can be as beautiful as a marriage and all of a sudden you have more you have to move or you're moving into a new home. So it could be all beautiful things, but it still has to get integrated. It can also be traumatic things that have been locked and trapped in the body, not appropriately felt. And perhaps at the time that you had a trauma, you needed to not feel it because you were in survival mode, but you have it stored somewhere in your body as a part of your energy frequency, as a part of the cellular memory that your body holds and contains. And the idea that, you know, it took me a long time, and, and I know you know this too, my path started because I had horrifying, debilitating back pain. And I didn't ever realize, no one ever told me that physical pain could be the result of trapped emotional pain. I had no idea. 
So I went on the path of chiropractic adjustments, drinking way too much wine, taking way too much Advil, going into the doctor's office. My body was literally breaking down. And I was just like, give me another pill. Let me have a glass of wine with that because it'll take away the anxiety. And I went on that that sort of path. And I'm terrified sometimes when I think back to what would have happened if I chose not to be really fucking brave, just like you were, because it's not easy to do a somatic healing experience the first time. It's terrifying to feel your feelings and feel your body. And it, for the people who go down that path, you are so brave to be willing to tap into these parts of yourself that you have have numbed and not felt because it is a big deal. And then once you realize it and you've done it, you're like, there's no other choice. This is the only way to be well in life. Yes, and that um, puts me to the point of another discussion I was having with my friend about um, my whole business is based on the whole mind-body connection and by giving people the tools needed to perform. Because by performing, you're able to tap into those different personas that normally you wouldn't be able to tap into outside that room and also the emotional expression to express emotions trapped in the body, right? Um, so I'm all about that. What I didn't know was that my automatic nervous system does stuff without me knowing, Yeah. right? So through somatic experience, I, um, I found that my stress response goes to disassociation and I've been doing that since I was a child um, and I had no idea. So when things get really, really stressful or whenever I go through something that's really, um, that should be emotional or just hard, I go numb. And I just thought I was strong. I'm like, I'm just a badass. No, it's because my <laughs> automatic nervous system was numbing me from feeling anything. So that's yep. why I didn't feel any red flags. I didn't feel like something was off because I couldn't feel anything at all. And I had no... I thought that that's what it was like to be normal and it wasn't. And then through those sessions, I went through all those cycles and then they got shorter and shorter, but I'm like, you're forced to sit there until the cycle finishes. So can you talk to us more about what that is like about the cycle finishing? And not only that, how can someone without it going to collapse, <laughs> mode how can someone kind of what are tools that someone can use to see if they have any stress responses that are that are that they might not even be conscious of here's the thing each and every one of us has things from our past you could in the book i talk about imprints soft imprints and profound imprints so each of us carries things from our past that are kind of our, our automated response to things that come up in life. It can be based on a prior experience that you're creating a comparison to the present moment. It could be things that you've been taught to fear, things that you've been taught to avoid, things that you've been taught to numb out from. And to me, the only way to move through those parts of our lives and those parts of our day is to actually, like, as you said, with the somatic healing experience, is to sit with it when the moment arrives, to not save it for later and be like, oh, I have so much shit to do today, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to this at 9 p.m. at night when I'm exhausted and binging out on Netflix to just continue the numbing cycle. It's a, ooh, somebody just emailed me, and I'm I'm like triggered by it right now. It just hit something and I don't know what it hit, but I can tell that I just shifted. That is a moment that I recommend for everyone. If you can take five minutes, even three minutes, and you literally shut your computer down for a minute, you sit, you like hold yourself. Yeah, I always put one hand, like one hand on my heart and one hand on my belly. And I hold myself and I contain myself in that feeling. And everyone can try it right now. Just like a connection to yourself. Why wouldn't you want to touch and hold and connect yourself, right? Like we haven't been taught to do this. I see you. Like it's okay. We have big feelings. 
we have big things that happen in life and there's no, we don't have to run away from them or be afraid of them because emotions are E energy in motion. It's moving all the time, but if you're avoiding it, if you're pausing it, if you're trapping it, it's going to come back with a vengeance sometimes because it wants your attention. If you look at things, Janet, that are giving you an energy, it's an exchange, right? So if you're feeling things throughout the day, if you can take these micro moments to check in with yourself, you will be able to heal so many different programs and belief systems that have been imprinted inside of you. And you get to, in that exact moment, you get to choose what's next. And I said, I was calling out Gina because she and I have had many conversations. And if she'll tell me something about her day of like, oh, you know, I'm just this, I am the person that will say, I am calling you out and I call bullshit because you keep having the same pattern show up. So when is it going to be enough for you? When will you finally start to choose a new way of connecting to those feelings, a new way of showing up to yourself when you have those feelings? Because the truth is no therapist, no per, no doctor, no medication, nobody's going to be able to do this for you. This is the work that each of us is responsible to do for ourselves. And it is the work that will change the things that you want everyone else to change in your life for you. Thank you for that. Because I feel that most people, even when given the tools or when they hear about the tools, they'll be like, oh my God, I don't have time to do this yeah. in my work day. Like if I get, if I get triggered during my work day, there's just no time. Yeah. But there is, because it's little micro moments like you just did. And and there's so much time. Time is an illusion, everyone. If you want more time, create more time. Choose more time. If you don't want more time and you want to hustle and you want to grind and you want to bullshit, 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 then so guess what? Of it, yeah. No fucking time. Yeah. It would be like, oh, the day's done. Damn it. I didn't do anything I wanted to for myself today. Okay, that puts me on the point of self-care. Yes, I have a whole list that I want to share with everybody. Okay. But please, go ahead. Um, as someone whose business very much on self-care, this whole experience made me realize that self-care is kind of BS without doing the self-work first. I totally so agree. Self-care is not a substitute for self-work. You have to do the work first. If not, there ain't a massage or a manicure who will make you feel better. It'll just keep on happening over and over and over and over again. Preach. Uh, so talk to us <laughs> about that. Preach, sis, preach. <laughs> um, yeah. I am going to talk to you about that because I love that shit so much. And, you know, to me, it's as simple as if you guys take nothing else away from this talk, it's ask and answer. It's like, you know, the idea of call and response, it's ask and answer. So ask yourself what you fucking need. Stop avoiding yourself and the voices that are trying to talk to you inside of yourself. Not the like chatty ego that tells you to do more, but like the heart voice, the soul voice that each and every one of us has when we choose to listen. Ask yourself, just like we did in that exercise, ask yourself, what do I need right now? What do you need, Kelsey? What do you need, honey? What do you need, baby? Like love yourself up in that way. This is the work. And then you have to answer that ask, right? So you ask yourself, what do I need right now? I get a message every single day about the one thing that I need to do to really show up for myself. 
and that it might be as simple as 20 minutes of movement. It might be a 20 minute meditation. It might be that I need to journal about something that I'm feeling overwhelmed by or intimidated by or depleted from or um, not enough about. And then it is my duty that day to answer that ask from myself. So ask and answer. Because that's the work, you know, is like actually showing up for yourself and your needs. And some days it might be like book a massage and enjoy the massage and be present for it. Well, what do I need to do to be present for my massage? I need to sit down and I need to journal with myself for 20 minutes first so I can get the rat race in my brain complete. It might be, I need to, um, in order to be present for my massage, I know I need to work out because my body won't be settled if I don't do that beforehand. Like, and you're right, as people show up to self-care, they're expecting some like radius, like radiant abundance to come through. But if you're not in receptor mode, if you're not in a receive mode, then you're not gonna be able to absorb what is trying to be given to you because you haven't done the work to open up the channels to receive those that amazing manicure, to receive somebody coming into your home to clean and like actually having clarity on what you need done so mm-hmm. that you don't feel more, that you have more shit to do at the end of it. Does that make sense? Yes, 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 absolutely. Ding, ding, ding. We need one of those TikTok yeah. things that's like, yes, 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 yes. So then the other thing I would say, and, you know, as an entrepreneur, I know many of you listening are, or you're probably making transitions with your own businesses and other things. I have five tips that help create healthy boundaries to bring balance to burnout. So I'll share those. They're very short and sweet. But before I do that, I have something that's come up a lot for me lately that I want to share on this on this call together is, and I think this is so important. If you are someone who is an entrepreneur, you have to take the time to move and shift and sift through what it is that you are actually putting out as an intention and what it is that you really want to have happen. Because the truth is we are we are infinite beings, but we are not infinite doings and doers, right? We cannot infinitely do that. We'll, that is not sustainable. So, so you have to be realistic with yourself. So I wanna share some of the things that I do as a business owner, and I, I'm sure you have tips too, but I think all of this helps to create healthy ways of showing up to work that are not endless so that you can feel accomplished and be goal oriented while also not getting drained and sucked dry. So it's January still. Every year I do an annual review with myself and with my team. And we just did it this week and we sit down together and we talk about, and we have lunch. It's like a great, beautiful thing. And we talk about What did we kick ass in, in 2020, the past year? And what are the things, what are three, and we both come prepared. What are three things that you think you did amazing with? And what are three areas you'd like to work on for this upcoming year? And we both share, and then we both have an ask of each other. And it's a beautiful way to kind of energetically set the tone. So personally and professionally, what you're going to do. Then every single quarter, we have a meeting about with all of our analytics and metrics, and we put goals for the upcoming quarter. And then we have a monthly meeting to track. So you have to be willing, and I'm a gypsy Gemini, I hate structure. I hate things on my schedule. I want free, free, free all day long. But I'm also somebody who knows that I have high goals and I am absolutely a get shit done kind of a person. I love business, I love my work. So I'm also making sure that I'm setting up a structure so that all of us have a focus and that the energy has somewhere to go. If you have a bunch of arrows, but you don't have a target, this goes for anything in life. How are you going to reach and get somewhere, right? We're just aimlessly flying off. 
And that's how it can feel when you're an entrepreneur is there's always more to do. There's always more to get done. There's always something else being added to your to-do list as you're checking things off that you've already done. So I think it's really important to set a loose structure so that you can see your accomplishments. You can see results and be like, and celebrate them and be able to like take minutes to have that joy. That's, that's super important, not necessarily in business, but with everything, because one of the most important things and one thing that I always check the people around me in is when, and this is a pet peeve of mine, when someone is like, I am the way that I am because it's just the way that I am. But why are you the way that you are? Have you ever like audited yourself, yes. check yourself, understand why you are and know that you have the ability to change and all because that's how, what you learned. Remember that your parents also, I mean, I'm a parent. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And that's the same feeling that my mom had. Only I have access to so much more information than she did. And she is just passing along what she learned from her mom who had no information. And so having that knowledge kind of puts, reframes everything for you to empower yourself to ask those questions and to adjust where needed and to check in and be like, wait, this is not working for me. How can I make it work for me and my family and so on and so forth? Cause I mean, it's so boring to keep doing the same shit every day. And like, it's easy to do that. And you might think like, you know what? This lemon water every morning is so good for me. Good for me that I drink lemon water in the morning. But you might not need lemon water in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say it. You know, it's like we all kind of pick up on these wellness trends. And who the hell are the people making the wellness trends? You know what I mean? Like they're just as human as the rest of us are. And each of us is going to be the one to know what we need by a simple ask and answer. Check in with yourself. Your higher self, your intuition will absolutely guide you in the right direction. You just have to create the channel to listen. Yeah, because that is what we came equipped with by our higher yes. self, right? That's how he talked. So, so the moment we shut it out, it's like we're out in the middle of the ocean with no radar. Yeah, a hundred percent. The most powerful tool that we have, we've been conditioned to stop listening to it. So yeah. it's like, do what you have to do to just make sure that's front and center and guiding you because that's really what you need. And self-care and wellness isn't copy and paste. It's like, what I need for me to feel well is going to be different than what you need for you to feel well. And it's wellness- Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And and part of my um not my I obviously I'm in the wellness industry, the fitness industry, but I've I've, I've always had a problem with um connecting to it's it's evolved a lot in the last few years, but connecting with the whole thing where it's just fitness is just about the waistline and the sizes and what you look like. And I'm like, does it matter if I have an eight pack? If I'm not well mentally or emotionally, I am not healthy. I'm not a healthy person. And so it's just giving the importance for the whole sphere of wellness, which is, yes, the fit, physical fitness, what you put into your body, but also the mental and emotional is so important. And as um, a human being and as a mom to two human beings, having this knowledge now makes me worried because I'm, I, I understand that I am um, privileged to have this knowledge because of what I do and the information that I have access to. And it, it, it makes me scared for the parents who don't have access to this information and the fact that they don't teach emotional competence in schools. Yeah. We are just raising children in a culture that it's like, by the time they're 40, they're going to collapse and have a stroke by 50 because of the stress. But that's why we're here. That's why you're here. That's why you're speaking voice. That's why everyone who's listening today is on is because we are helping to build part of the future and be part of it. And, you know, it's even why not to sound salesy, but it's true. It's like, that's why I signed on with a brand like Michelob is because they're willing to have these conversations and they're willing to see wellness as a whole atmosphere of 
of energy that's not just like somebody who cycles all day and then drinks a beer, you know, like these amazing conversations. And, you know, I want to leave everyone with these tips because it goes to your point of how we can all start to incorporate this now because we are all teaching each other. And there is no copy and paste, as you said, and there is no, there's a spectrum for burnout and everyone falls in a different place on it based on the life experiences that they've had and that they're having and that they will continue to have. And so the thing, the five things that I would share with everyone as you build your work-life balance, so you can be a better mom, you can teach more, you have the energy to show up and give to the communities that you feel so passionate and called to serve is number one, if people are willing to, is to set an out of office. Most people don't realize that even on a Friday, as they go into the weekend, there's a temptation to still check their emails. And if you, if you don't, if you're comfortable to just shut it off and not check it again until Monday, good on you. But if you're willing to, I would set an out of office because it tells your ego that you are not responsible to respond because something is automatically responding to others. That's number one. It just gives you permission to take time off, right? The second tip is mini breaks every day. I said this already, but micro breaks equals macro joy. So you take five minutes between calls, you do a dance party, you go for a 20 minute walk outside, you take a shower in the middle of the day because you wanna have a shift in your energy, you make yourself a nourishing soup, you, whatever it is, micro breaks. We have to teach one another that we don't have expectations of each other to be on all the time. That every one of us needs and thrives from being off duty. That's how we can come together and thrive is when we are not having to be on and have off duty time. Um, I'd say the third thing, focus. So if people, again, ask and answer, and this is the other thing I would recommend for everyone, if you take nothing else away but this, turn off all the notifications on the on your phone. All of the notifications on your phone. That way, when you pick up your phone, you are deciding and you are choosing to use the device. It is not taking control and using you to respond to all of it. If you haven't watched The Social Dilemma yet, you have to watch that documentary. Oh, I did. I know, right? I was like, throw it in the garbage. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna give all my followers away to somebody else. I don't want this shit anymore. Um, but I'm telling you guys, if you can turn off all the notifications on your phone, even maybe some of you already have, Go one step further, put your phone on airplane mode every single night at like 8 p.m. And don't turn it back on until you have done your morning practice of like taking that ask and answer time. And then like you take more control over what is getting time and control in your life. Um, my other thing for focus is I love a mini timer. So if I want to clean up my office or I feel like I need a, um, a break and I just want to relax and maybe journal a little bit about the next part of my day or nourish, but in a way that feels really good, but I don't have to keep checking the clock. I set a timer and I will allow myself, you know how much shit you get done when you know that you are in like a chunk of time. So that's a huge thing for the focus energy. So it's out of office, mini breaks, focus. The fourth is movement. If you move your body, you move your mind, right? So movement is does not have a one size fits all. It's whatever you wanna do. You could sit in child's pose for 10 minutes and then just stretch a little bit and that's movement. Um, you could clean your house, that's movement. You could water your plants, that's movement. You, whatever it is, there's so many forms of movement. The idea is not about getting your body to look great. It's about moving the energy of your mind so that you move the energy of your body and your body can help move everything for you so that you have a healthy, balanced well-being. Um, and then the fifth one, which is no surprise to all of you, nourishment. And that can be so many different things. You can nourish your relationships. You can nourish your heart. You can nourish your mind with amazing books. You can nourish your body with food. You can 
nourish your mind. I mean, there's just so many different ways to do it, but nourishment is to me one of the biggest things that we should be focused on right now. That's it. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I know that we have to like cut soon. Um, and I'm like so sad because I could talk to you forever. You're so fun and you just have so much wisdom and I'm so grateful that you exist. Um, Same. I'm so grateful you exist. And also like that people like you are going after all of the, the science and the research too, because I put a lot of it in my book, but like we need more of those voices because you're going to be the person that gets to the skeptics that need the science and the data to like turn around and actually pay attention. One of my projects that I'm like, I really want to do is to um, include emotional competence in schools. Yeah. Huge. Have to be taught. Well, first we have to teach all of the adults how to be emotionally competent so that yeah. people don't get triggered when Sheila emails and BCCs the boss on an email. You know what I mean? Like that's emotional competence that all of us adults need to learn so that we can then teach the children. <laughs> I agree. There are so many ways that you guys can also be tuning into some of this stuff. Like you can create your own little mini schedule for yourself every week of like, you know what? I'm going to meditate on a Monday, like move my body on a Tuesday. I'm going to do some journaling Wednesday, you know, like imagine that you were your own health coach, your own therapist, your own like healer. You can intuit with yourself that way and say, what would I recommend if I was looking at me and wanting to offer support? Mm. You know, it's like, don't always feel like you have to outsource your empowerment and let others tell you, even what Janet and I have spoken about today, take it with a grain of salt, because this is based on both of our human life experiences and each of you have had your own. And I think it's important that you realize how much power you have in the driver's seat of your life to know what you need and to really like trust it and honor it, even if it sounds so weird when it's being shared with you from your heart, like listen to it because there is something magical in it that's just for you. And that's what it's meant to be. I had something to add if that's okay. Um, Kelsey, hi Kelsey. Hi. Um, I just wanted to share something. I think that I, I come from a very big family and we were all raised to be hustle, hustle, hustle. The more you do, the more you, you are. And it's a kind of mental health and burnout is not really talked about much in the Hispanic culture. And sometimes it's even like shamed upon like, oh, get over it, like being a doll. And I grew up with that, men that mentality because that was what, that's what was being fueled to me. And there aren't that many resources out there for the Latino community to kind of get to know a little bit more about that, be more open to that and be educated on that. And I have been trying to do my part within my family to kind of just educate them and tell them to just slow down and, you know, even introduce Reiki into their lives and things like that. But, you know, if, if in your future, if there is any possibility to, to be a little bit, um, if there are any resources that you guys can share about, you know, being cultural, uh, reaching other cultures that are not really that open to hearing about uh, mental health. But that would be awesome. Well, thank I you. I love that, Mira. Uh, no, I'm, like, I'm Cuban and Dominican, so <laughs> I know. I know. Um, I could definitely, that's a great point, because I'm still, I'm talking to you guys, but having this conversation with my family, it's different. They'll be like, Reiki, Reiki, que? who's Reiki? Yeah, like, they will not, they're just not open to it. Um, and I think it's so important because then the children of that culture are living a completely different reality. And yeah. then we're seeking the answers from our family, but they're not receptive just because they grew up different. So I think that your um, point is so important and I'll make sure to do whatever I can to provide you guys with resources. Tell I love that. <laughs> and Mira, I'm gonna say too, just, because the teacher in me has to do this, as you know, it's going to be you, boo. 
Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't need to ask us for shit. Like, yeah, Janet will do stuff amazingly, but like, if you see a need in the world, it's because you have a calling to answer it. <laughs> yeah, and I have been trying, and I and I and I look at you, and I see all the stuff that you share. So I have been trying to reach those around me, and obviously, a goal of mine is to, in the future, kind of expand a little bit more. But I definitely do use my social media platforms to speak more about it and to like share knowledge and things like that. So I'm definitely doing my part. I know <laughs> so you like, are. Yeah, my goal is to definitely one day be like you guys and share even more knowledge to other groups as well. So you guys inspire me. Thank you so People like Janet and I to help you have a bigger platform because that to me is what we're also here for is we have a mission and work that we feel called to do. And then I want to help other people in their mission and their unique divine light that they came here to share. And I see, I've told you that Mir is one of my students. I've told you that for a while. I want you to know that your voice and your work and your connection and passion and community is ready to start hearing from you when you are ready to start sharing. To be honest, I think it's on all of us to really see our family, friends, coworkers that you feel close enough with to do this, but to really be aware of each other right now. I think that's one of the best gifts we can give each other as human beings is to be aware of each other and say, hey, I see you. And I just want to let you know, I see you doing a lot. And I would love to share some tips that I just learned or um, ask you if we could have a conversation so that we can try to help each other stay balanced and stay healthy and bright as we keep going through these very challenging times. I think the more that we can all kind of rely on each other and call each other out really in a loving way to say, I think I'm worried about you. I, I see you doing so much. Could be an older family member that's taking care of everybody, right? whatever it may be, to really show up and say, I see you and I care about you and I want to help you find some good balance and boundaries so that you can be well because we need you around. Kelsey, thank you. Thank you, Janet.